Welcome back, y'all. Today we are going to be showing you our take on how we inlay gold wire. This is a tungsten band, whiskey barrel, and gold. Stick around. All right, first up are our supplies. We have a eight millimeter tungsten band with a five millimeter inlay. We have dead soft one millimeter wire gold. Uh, I believe that's 14 karat gold. And then a whiskey barrel wood or oak. Uh, yeah, whiskey barrel wood. This wire is one millimeter. I think it is it 18 gauge. I'm gonna have to check on that. Somebody can call me out on what gauge that would be. And so first things up is just getting the wood to a usable size, which we use that little hole saw. I sand one edge so we make sure that one edge is completely flat and then take it to the band saw. I'm cutting this piece a little bit bigger than five millimeters. We'll show you how to size it coming up here in just a moment. Once we got our little piece off here, we're gonna throw it into our soft jaws and then bore out the inside until the inside diameter. Again, if you've seen any of our videos, we usually go about 0.2 millimeters bigger on the inlay than the actual ring itself. So we're ultimately going until that's a not a super tight fit. And sometimes you don't even have to move the boring tool again. You can just go in and out until you get that fit if you get close. The worst is going too far and then it's way too big. From there, I take it to the metal lathe, which you could do this on the wood lathe as well. This is one way, instead of sanding, an easier way to get this piece of wood exactly five millimeters, super quick, so much faster than sanding we just go over a little bit go down until we get that tungsten band to fit and then we know exactly uh, how much we need to sand from here now we'll just sand that little edge off and call it a day with that making our little cuts halfway through so we can break it in half sometimes it doesn't break on the cuts, so those were useless on this one but that's okay so we're adding a thick CA glue, and then we also did a dry fit before the glue, make sure the pieces fit together, and they do. So we add the glue, clamp it up a little bit, make sure our seams are as tight as possible so that they become invisible once the finished ring is, well, finished. We'll let that dry, and then I just take it to the wood lathe, take the wood down a little bit past the tungsten. You can see that there's a tiny gap there and then we'll put another one on this side as well. That gives us enough room for finish. Now we're gonna make the groove with the metal lathe as well. And that's the easiest thing to do is if you have one. If not, that's okay. You could do it on the wood lathe as well. And so here we have little clippers. They're flat on one side, angled on the other. Before you start your inlay on any wire, we're gonna cut the very edge with the flat side down and the angled side up. This is gonna give us a very flat surface on one edge. And you wanna do this on both sides as well. So now we have one super flat edge. We don't have any kinks or anything or any squeezes at the, uh, at the edge to work with. So once we get that cut, I took this tool this is a cutoff blade that I'm using. I don't know if it ruins the, <laughs> the tool, but it's it's super soft gold. I don't imagine that this is ruining anything. It's just how I've found it to be super easy because I don't like using glue on the gold wire. It just makes it a mess. So if I don't have to use glue, I would prefer not to. And so I made a one millimeter cut. I'm using a one millimeter cutoff blade as well as one millimeter wire and I'm just going to hammer it into place using that cutoff blade that we use to cut the hole in the wood. And I was being a little bit too gentle at the beginning. And so once I really start to get a little bit more aggressive with this, the gold stays in place without any glue again. And that's the best part about this method. 
is that I don't have to use any glue. We're gonna go straight from here to maybe, maybe a little bit of sanding after we get the inlay in there, but really just from here to a finish. The only reason I would sand it at this point is because the wire might have some little dings from the cutoff blade. Um, so I might sand it at 220 and that'll give it a nice brushed look as well, the wire. And then add the finish. So once I got a little bit more aggressive, you can see the gold is now sticking in the inlay just by force. And at this point, we're just going to go all the way around and making that force keep the gold in there again rather than glue. Another great thing is about using, uh, not using glue is if we make any mistakes, I can just tear it out and then restart. Where glue, if you make any mistakes, you have a wild mess to deal with. So if you have the tools or if you have anything like this, I mean, I don't need to use that cutoff blade. I could use something else that's the same or close um, width and that would work. And again, guess this is uh, just our take on it. This is the easiest way that so far I have found. There might be easier ways. If you have one that you wanna share, comment below. I'd love to hear your take on it as well. And then we, I think our camera died before we were able to finish, unfortunately. So ultimately, we do that flat cut on the other end, put it together, and then we just make small, tiny, tiny, small cuts until we get that perfect fit in there. And then once we get that perfect fit, perfect cut, and again, this is why we don't use glue, we can keep cutting and pulling it out and going back in until we get the two flat edges so close together, you cannot see a seam. You, well, you can, but anyone who doesn't know what they're looking at is gonna have a hard time finding where that seam is. So the, the goal is just to get to those two flat edges touching each other and just making small cuts at a time. I wish that our camera didn't die there, but it is what it is. This is a Flex CA that we finish this with. We just take it to our lathe with the carbide tool. We go slowly here and we're taking down the finish down to the tungsten and we don't want any finish on the metal. We only want it in the channel, otherwise it does look bad. And so here I'm going as far as I can with this, with this carbide tip. And from after that, I'm going to go with a 400 grit sandpaper, rub off any other glue that might be on the tungsten. So this is a 400 grit. And I've no mentioned before, sometimes I don't go any higher than 400 before polish. It just depends uh, really on nothing. It depends on my mood. So from the sanding, we go to the polish wheel, which we always use Zam. It just works so well. The Zam will also get off excess glue or finish from the tungsten ring. So we do use it on all the sides in case we missed anything and don't see it like this here. This isn't polishing tungsten, that's just removing any extra glue. And I'm just feeling the edges to see if I can feel anything else. And then with the Zam, you take it to a clean polished wheel, rub off all the Zam, and that's that, guys. So here's our finished ring. You will be able to see the seam as I roll it around a little bit. I should have got a better view and I didn't, so I apologize about that. But if you guys liked the video, like, and appreciate you watching and see y'all next time.